Hello everyone. Today we are going to find the member forces in this truss using flexibility matrix method. This is a statically indeterminate truss. We need to find a degree of static indeterminacy. To find the internal degree of static indeterminacy, this is the formula. M is the number of the members. Let us count the members. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. J is the number of the joints. Let us count the joints. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. For DSI, we will get a 0. Let us find the external static indeterminacy. R is the number of the reactions to be found. In the points A and D, there are hinged supports. In the hinged supports, there will be two reactions. And in the point C, there is a roller support. In the roller support, there will be only one reaction. 2 plus 2 plus 1, it is 5. Let us find a small r, that is the available equilibrium conditions. There are three conditions available. Sigma m is equal to 0, sigma v is equal to 0 and sigma h is equal to 0. For DSE, we will get a 2. So the degree of static indeterminacy of the truss is a 2. In this truss, we have only external degree of static indeterminacy. So out of these 5 reactions, we need to remove any 2 reactions. From the point A, I am going to remove the horizontal reaction HA and the vertical reaction VA. So we have to remove the hinged support from A. Here you can see that I have removed the hinged support. This structure is called released structure. Now let us draw the coordinates diagram. In this analysis there are two coordinates. They are HA and VA. Because we have removed both of them. Let us keep HA as the first coordinate and VA as the second coordinate. Let us assume that HA is acting towards the right side and VA is acting upwards. Finally, if we get any negative answer, that means our assumption is incorrect. Then we can change the direction. We know that this is the formula we are using in the flexibility matrix method. Since there are two coordinates, the size of the P matrix, delta L matrix and a delta matrix will be 2 cross 1. There will be 2 rows and 1 column. And the size of the flexibility matrix will be 2 cross 2. There will be 2 rows and 2 columns. P1 will be HA because that is our first coordinate. P2 will be VA because that is our second coordinate. In this address, there is no external deflection due to temperature change or due to expansion or shortening of the member. In this case, delta 1 and delta 2 will be 0. Then we have to make this a table. In the table, first let us enter all of the members. Then we need to find the values of P, that is the member forces in the released structure. Before finding the member forces, we need to find the reactions. In the point D, there is a hinged support. So there will be two reactions, one vertical and one horizontal. In the point C, there is a roller support. We know that in the roller support, there will be only one reaction. Here there is only horizontal reaction. Using this rule, we can find VD. VD is acting upwards, so it will be positive. And this is acting downwards, so it will be negative. For VD, we will get 48 kN. No need to do this step. Except VD and 48, there is no other vertical load or vertical reaction. VD should be equal to 48. This load is acting downwards, so VD should be acting upwards. To find HD, let us take a moment about to see. HD is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be negative, and the distance is 3, so 3 HD. This load is also acting in the anticlockwise direction, so it is also negative, and the distance is 4. 
for vd there is no perpendicular resistance so we should not consider this one for hd we will get a negative value that means the assumed direction is incorrect hd is actually acting towards the right side so we need to change the direction here i have changed the direction except these two there is no other horizontal load or horizontal reaction so hd and hc will be having the same value but they will be in the opposite direction hd is acting towards the right side so hc should be acting towards the left side now let us find the member forces in the joint A, we can apply the rule sigma V is equal to 0. Then we will come to know that the member force AE is 0. Then we can apply the rule sigma H is equal to 0. Then we will know that the member force in AB is also 0. Otherwise, no need to do this. If you know the shortcuts how to find the zero force members, you can easily find them. If you do not know, I have already made a video regarding this. You can see the description and click that link and watch the video. In the joint B, we can apply the rule sigma H is equal to 0. Already we know that the member force AB is 0. Then we will come to know that the member force at BC also 0. Now let us take the joint B and find the member force BE. When we take the joint B, no need to take the zero member forces. Let us apply this rule and find FBE. FBE is acting upwards, so it will be positive. This is acting downwards, so it will be negative. For FBE, we will get 48 kN. Now let us take the joint D. In the joint D, first let us apply this rule. This is acting upwards, so it will be positive. FCD is acting downwards, so it will be negative. For FCD, we will get 48 kN. Now, let us apply this rule. This is acting towards the left side, so it will be negative. This is acting towards the right side, so it will be positive. For FDE, we will get 64 kN. Now, let us take the joint C. Before finding the member forces, we need to find this angle. Let us keep this angle as a theta. Let us take this uh, triangle. In this uh, triangle, let us apply tan theta formula. That will be the opposite side 3 meter upon the adjacent side 4 meter. So theta will be tan inverse 3 upon 4. In this way, we will get 36.87. Let us apply this uh, rule. This is acting towards the left side, so it will be negative. We have to resolve FCE in the horizontal direction. To keep it horizontal, we need this angle. So with the FCE, we have to multiply cos 36.87. Since it is acting towards the left side, it will be negative. For FCE, we will get minus 80 kN. FCD, we already calculated, so no need to do that again. Let us apply the values of P. Now we need to find the values of K1. Our first coordinate is HA. To find the values of K1, we have to remove all of the loads from the truss and apply unit load in the direction of HA. When we do this, we should not take VA also. Here you can see that I have removed all of the loads from the truss and I have applied unit load in the direction of HA. We have to find these three reactions. Except VD, there is no vertical load or vertical reaction. So VD will be zero. Or we can apply this rule. Using this rule for VD, we will get a zero. Using this rule, we can find HD. HD is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative and the distance is three. So three HD. For this unit load, there is no perpendicular distance and there is nothing else. So HD will be zero. Except these two, there is no other horizontal load or horizontal reaction. So HA and HC should be having the same value 1 and both of them should be acting in the opposite direction. Otherwise, we can use this rule and find HC. In this truss, except the members AB and BC, all of the other members are zero force members. If you want to know how to find zero force members very easily, as I said earlier, 
there is a link for the video in the description you can click the link and watch the video let us take the joint a and to find the member force in a b both of these are acting towards the right side so both of them will be positive for f a b we will get to minus one now let us take the joint to b and to find the member force in b c this is acting towards the left side so it will be negative and this is acting towards the right side so it will be positive for f a b we have got to minus one in the previous step minus into minus it will become positive for f b c we will get to minus one let us enter the values of k1 now we are going to find the values of k2 to find the values of k2 we have to remove all of the loads and to apply unit to load in the direction of va also we should not consider ha you can see that i have removed all of the loads and i have applied unit to load in the direction of va va is acting upwards so vd should be acting downwards but both of them should be having the same value unity let us take a moment about c and find hd this unit load is acting in the clockwise direction so it will be positive and the distance is 8 hd is acting in the anti clockwise direction so it will be negative and the perpendicular distance is 3 for this there is no perpendicular distance so we should not take this for hd we have got a positive value that means our assumption is correct hd is acting towards the left side but this assumption is incorrect if hd is acting towards the left side hc should be acting towards the right side but both of them should be having the same value be is a zero force member let us take the joint a and find the member forces we have to find this angle we have already done that that is tan inverse 3 upon 4 we will get 36.87 this angle will be 90 minus 36.87 so that we will get 53.13 first we have to apply this rule because there will be only one unknown we have to resolve FAE in the vertical direction to keep it vertical we need 53.13 degree so with the FAE we have to multiply cos 53.13 it will be acting upwards so it will be positive the unit load is also acting upwards so that is also positive for fae we will get minus 1.667 now let us apply this rule we have to resolve fae in the horizontal direction to keep it horizontal we need this angle so with the fae we have to multiply cos 36.87 it will be acting towards the right side so it will be positive fab is also acting towards the right side so it is also positive just before we have found fae we can apply that finally for fab we will get 1.333 now let us take the joint to b and to find the member force in bc this is acting towards the left side so it will be negative and this is acting towards the right side so it will be positive fab we have already found we can apply that for fbc we will get 1.333 now let us take the joint d first let us apply this rule both of these are acting downwards so both of them are negative for fcd we will get to minus one now let us apply this rule both of these are acting towards the left side so both of them are negative for fde we will get a minus 2.667 now let us take the joint to c and find the member force in ce we can apply this rule and easily find fce we have to resolve fce in the vertical direction to keep it vertical we need this angle so with the fce we have to multiply cos 53.13 it will be acting upwards so it will be positive fcd is acting upwards so it is also positive let us apply the value of fcd for fce we will get 1.667 let us enter all of the values of k2 now we have to find the length of the members length of a b b c and e d is 4 length of b e and c d is 3 
to find length of ye and ce we can use pythagoras theorem root of 3 square plus 4 square we will get 5 meter let us enter all of the lengths then we need to find pk1l pk2l k1 square l k1 k2l k2 square l also we need to find the summation of them after adding we will get these using this formula we can find delta 1l using this we can find delta 2l using this we can find delta 1 1 using this we can find delta 1 2 and delta 2 1 and finally using this we can find delta 2 2 in the question nothing is mentioned about the area or the Young's modulus so we can assume that for all of the members area and Young's modulus are same in these two matrices let us apply everything we can take 1 upon AE outside in this formula let us apply all of the matrices we can take 1 upon AE inverse outside it will come as AE using a calculator we can find the inverse of this matrix we will get this this minus this we will get this then we can eliminate AE after multiplying these two matrices we will get HA and VA for both of them we have got positive values that means our assumptions are correct then using this formula we can find the real member forces if we get a positive value that means the forces are tensile and if we get a negative value that means the forces are compressive here you can see that I have entered all of the member forces in the truss let us take the joint D in the joint D there is no inclined member so we can easily find VD this force is acting downwards so VD should be acting upwards this is acting towards the right side so HD should be acting towards the left side then we can apply the rule Sigma H is equal to 0 and find HC otherwise there is one more idea this angle is 36.87 HD will be equal to 37.97 into cos 36.87 we will get 30.37 now we are going to end this session thank you for watching this video